Um, what's the word? So recap. This is how we're going to break up the recap. draft. All right. We, our, our, we can't do like a draft recap over all 32 teams in one day. It, it would just, it wouldn't be fun for y'all. Listen to whatever. So you're interested in what we think of your team, your players, guys, whatever. We're going to get there, but we're going to break it up over two weeks. We're going to do a division a day. Yes. It's the only way I know how to talk about this stuff in a way in which we can spend 15 minutes on it and not an hour on it and still have an opinion. Yes. I, I think it was a genius idea. You were incredibly smart for coming up with this. Um, so we can go ahead and actually move. I hate we're starting here, but that's fine. Well, we're I starting. wanted to do this because the, the Jordan Love stuff was so, you know, so fresh, so whatever. Now, we could have talked about any number of big topics that, yeah, that's okay. you know. That's but, probably the best way to start. But we can start here. Tomorrow, I guess we'll do the AFC North so we can talk about the Ravens. Let's start with the Packers then since you brought them up. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Packers. Uh, I do – I'm so <laughs> confused. What did you think about their draft? Good. Let, all right, I'm trying to figure out how do we equate this. Liked it, loved it, hated it, you know, disliked it kind of thing. Like I, it's, you know, I you disliked uh, their draft. I because I, I disliked I, their draft. I'll, I'll well. tell you this: I, listening to um, listening to Mike Lombardi's GM shuffle today, uh, I agree with him a hundred percent. Because if you go and look around, you get different draft grades from. So many oh. different people, and it's yeah. just, it's all biased. It's all and based on what they think and whatever. So I'll just, we'll just tell you whether we like what they did or what, whether we don't like it. And it's I think all that's from enough. people that have never made a draft pick a day in their life. Exactly. Exactly. But, but we're going to do the same thing. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. When yeah. we get to Detroit, I'm going to give them a grade because I have a philosophy that I think is the right way to build a football team. Yeah, and they did something different than that, so I'm going to be a dislike. It's just yeah, it's and we'll, and we'll get there in a minute. It. It's only way I know how to quantify it. So, so if you look at and there's numerous different sites for you to go to. The one that I trust the most, as far as value picks and and actually figuring out how good these players are, I trust Pro Football Focus for their their player rankings because they actually okay. go through the film work. And I trust the Huddle Report for the same thing. They actually go through and they rank these players. So the HuddleReport.com does value grades for every team. Out of 32 teams, Green Bay was 28 as far as value picks, right? So Jordan Love, okay, there might have been some value there. They had him ranked 22nd. And uh, they traded they up a, to get him. And they traded up to get him. Now that's where it gets a little hairy. But they reached for A.J. Dillon in the second round. They reached for another running back in the third round, the kid from uh, Cincinnati, right? Um, no, that's a tight oh, end. Oh, no, tight end. Sorry, sorry. Uh, and and then, you know, the linebacker, Kamal Martin from Minnesota, like, again, another reach. Like, I, and, and you can talk I, I about like whatever. I like a single player that they drafted. Let's say, yeah, hang on. I, I really don't. Like, I, I like Love because I think he's a boomer bust guy. The problem yeah. is... He's not going to see any field time unless Aaron gets hurt. Now, if they know something, here's the problem that we don't, we're not able to adjust. Okay. Yeah. They have the medicals on Aaron. They have the medicals that nobody else has. That's all true. Right? And if they think it's not about his caliber of play, but we don't think this guy can play 16. Yes. We've got him on this ridiculous contract, but if we don't think he can play 16, we have to find a backup for him. Yeah. We have to, we have to think about two quarterbacks and we have to spend draft capital on it. And if that's the case, then I'm out of this draft class. If I couldn't have Burrow and I couldn't have two, I made it abundantly clear. There's only one other quarterback I would have spent a meaningful pick on. I would have let everybody else fall. And that was love. And it's only because I, I, there is a chance he could be dynamic and really good. But if he's not, it's not going to take me three years to find that out. That's that's a very. That's good all point. I want. I, your time is more valuable than anything else. Yes, yes, I I agree with all of that. Their team needs, uh, based on a that, lot of these. Not another pick on here I like at he, all. Here's the thing: they needed wide receiver help. Like if you look at the stats from last year, they had a, nearly 700 yards of additional offense dropped passes by that wide receiving core. Now they added Funches. You know, the in the most offseason. loaded wide receiving draft 
we may have ever seen. There were in my 37 opinion. wide receivers taken. Like in, I, in the top, the top two rounds were just filled yes. with, I think, potential star power. Yeah. Just I got an opinion about that, so, so I could be wrong in three years. But Now, the other two team needs were offensive line and linebacker. They addressed both of those, but not until they got into the fourth round. Yeah. Like, I, they reaching for A.J. Dillon at running back. That was a wasted pick. Was just my, Now, it, that's not to say that he can't be a good player. Doesn't but matter. Aaron Jones came out last year and was phenomenal. I was just about to say, you've got a good running back. Finally. And it took a few years to get that. But why why use it on A.J. Dillon, who hasn't really proven that he can catch the ball out of the backfield? You've shown that you need that. That's that's what makes Aaron Jones so good. It, yeah, he, he can well, maybe okay come in. if you want a different kind of running back, okay? If you want a change of pace guy, you but know, a even more of a still, that's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm okay with that. My problem is, is you know how I feel about running backs. You, yeah. you find one. Yeah, you, you don't you, have to draft him in the one. second round. You. You go, to the, you go to the playgrounds when they open back up in Chicago and or Detroit or one of these big cities around where you live, and now you, you're probably not going to find them in Green Bay because there's not a lot of playgrounds in Green Bay. But but when you get into a big city, you you find a dude that can tote the rock. Yes. You just can. Yes. C.J. Anderson came off the scrap heap a couple of years ago, and he was running in the playoffs over folks. He oh, just, just can. ridiculous. Like, just unbelievable. I no. don't mean to devalue it, but I just don't value it. I just don't value it. No, it blew my mind just thinking about it. Like, I, oh, so frustrating. Yeah. So, yeah, so they, they addressed yeah. offensive line and linebacker in the later rounds. Yeah. Obviously, their defense was really good last year. Uh, you know, you, they need Aaron to play better, but I, I do think that he needs more weapons uh, in order to help out. Because, I mean, 700 dropped yards – in a season is is pretty ridiculous, right? So they had a, they had guys, and you can say it's because it's cold, and you can say it's whatever. But my gosh, even even with their undrafted free agent signings, they drafted one wide receiver, and it's a kid from Michigan State that is known for dropping the ball. Like it, it blows my mind just looking at what they did in this draft. Like it, if I were a Packers fan, I would be livid. Now I'm not a Packers fan. So, I kind of find it entertaining. Yeah, but, the only reason why it's not a hate for me is because it pissed Aaron off, and that gives me some some joy. You got that right. You got that right. All right, what uh, what team do you want to hit on next? You want to do uh, the Vikings? No, let's do them last. Okay, we can do that. Uh, okay. Lions? Yeah, let's go to the Lions. All right. Let's get them out of the way. I really – so, this – they had a lot – so – what you're going to find in some of these things is if teams had a lot of picks early, then, yes, the quality of player that they drafted is going to be better than the quality of player other guys drafted that yeah. traded back or but didn't have it, early picks or a lot typically. of early picks or whatever. I care about who you took in the spots you took. Yes. I vehemently disagree with the first pick that they had. And number three, I've, we've been over that. We went over that Friday. Now, I well, let me let me jump think, in on that, Rip. Before you start diving into it, the Okuda pick, taking him at three, yes, that is insanely high for a cornerback. But in this scheme, even though we we've come to find out that Patricia didn't really want him, he wanted Derek Brown, which was the smart pick. Um, Okuda does fit in really well. With like Doesn't his matter. his Doesn't man matter. heavy Doesn't coverage matter. scheme, Doesn't so matter. so it Just may work fit, out okay, but fit, it, but that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant of the grade, Gary. It's just irrelevant of the grade. Just because something works out doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. Agree. Many Agreed. things have been wrong. That that oh shit, man! I can't believe that worked. Like it just it was still wrong. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. In the second round, they took DeAndre Swift. Yeah, so in a situation where they already have a pretty good run game and they have a lot of holes to fill, they take another running back. I just found that to be really weird. Um, If they were loaded, the teams that I liked taking running backs were teams that don't have a lot of holes, and they're just trying to get a little bit better and so running back is an upgrade that they can have. I don't think Swift is an upgrade from Carrion Johnson at all. 
And no. I thought there were running backs better than him left on the board that didn't get drafted at that point. Yep, I, I agree. Just, I just found it to be a mistake. And you've got two early picks. I think you whiff on both. Now, both could be good, productive players for a long time. That's fine. It still doesn't make it right. Now you still overpaid for for the for position. Both of them. Yeah. Uh, they needed a cornerback. They needed linebacker help. They needed offensive line help. They got their cornerback got early. Um, and then they, you know, they, they kind of reached for uh, Jonah Jackson, the offensive lineman out of Ohio State. They kind of reached for Logan Stenberg from Kentucky. But, I mean, it's marginal. Or margin, Once you get into the third and fourth best. rounds, there are no reaches anymore. Yeah. Nobody, no, nobody's then, board is, looks the same. This is just the, the value based on, on the huddle report. Um, uh, yeah, but, but it's their their value. That's, that's based off of how they graded all these guys correct, too. Correct. Their and biases are built in, just like everybody else's. Once you get past the third round, nobody's a reach. Nobody. Yeah, it's just everything's up in the air, and it's just what do you whatever. need? And people can say we took best player available, but really, the the ninth best guard or the twentieth best receiver. How do you grade those two? Hey, who's more don't. valuable? Who's who's the better pick? Th- there's no way to quantify it. Yeah. Football is such a weird sport in that way. So I, I just I think you can't if you like the guy if you think they got a steal somewhere late, that's fine. But but saying they reach for anybody late is is done. It, you you can only really judge them based off of what they did early. Um, they uh, they did get the edge rusher out of Notre Dame uh, in the third round. So you know, I think he could be impactful. I just think what would what would that front seven look like? if they had Brown and him coming into this rookie class instead of a DB and him. I just, but it's my, that's my biases. I believe the proper way to build, listen, I watched the NFL and I watched the Super Bowl in the last couple of years. Most of the teams in the Super Bowl have a great front seven. Yeah. I I just don't know any other way to quantify it. I just don't. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. Because I I don't know. I don't know that the, uh, you know the Chiefs did, but no. But the Chiefs they, are built completely got, different, though. Yeah, they've got a they've got. If a you game have changer. Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and the offensive, ju- they're Big Twelve football. Oh, one hundred percent. But yeah, very few teams in the NFL are Big Twelve football. Yeah, it's it, it's what makes them a matchup nightmare for everybody. It's what made the Ravens a matchup nightmare for everybody last year. I mean, it's you know it, it's stuff that hadn't really been done in this league, maybe ever. You know, yeah. Um, so, uh, Lions, I mean, I, I'm going to say that I dislike what they did. I, uh, I disliked what they did as well. I, I, I don't know that it's, it, they, they didn't have the worst draft, nope. but I, I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So we'll, uh, we'll move on from there. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, let's talk about the bears. Um, I don't know what to make of the bears. Uh, you know, they had two second-round picks, and then they didn't pick again until round five. Uh, they got the cornerback out of Utah, and I think that that was a really good uh, pick for them. Tight yeah, end I think Cole, they got real good value there. Yeah, tight end Cole Komet from Notre Dame. I think that was a good pickup. Uh, they've but already got Jimmy Graham. This is the problem. You know, While this guy is probably the best player on the board when they took him, and they got good value for him, and I think he's an athlete, they got like seven tight ends now on the roster right now currently. Well, they they did drop uh, Trey Burton right before the draft. Yes. So, you know, that, they still, but they no, still had too many. Like, they still, and they still currently have too many. That's not a place where they had a hole. It's just weird to me. I, I don't know. I their can't their team needs out. were cornerback, offensive line, and defensive line, and they didn't address either of those until late. Um, the problem is, is that's none of those are their team need. The problem is, is no nobody's willing to put their team need up on the board and say it's a need yeah. because everybody's afraid of offending them. But their team need is quarterback. That's their yeah, team. I well, yes, you know, I I think that they feel good about Foles being in there, and they're obviously the GM is wanting uh, Trubisky to work out uh, because they gave up so much. I don't to think get Foles him. or Trubisky are going to work out. I've seen Foles. Foles worked under Frank Wright's offense. Let's see. Carlos Gomez jumps in. He said, Bears will cut four or five of the tight ends. They will only keep Graham, Komet, and Harris. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess. I just. I mean, yeah, but why else would you keep more than three? I mean, okay. 
Like, uh, yeah, He's obviously they're going to cut him. I just, uh, like, they've got a ton on the roster. And that, I that's I think the dude's weird. stud. I think the dude's an athlete. You just got a lot of holes to fill. And, yes, you got value there, but. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely value, and I think he's I think he's an upgrade over some of the other ones. It's just really hard to look at this team and judge it for anything other than other than a hole at offense. I can't trust a single offensive player they have, strictly yeah. because I don't trust the trigger man. And, it, and, and I'm I not don't going know. To. I don't know that the offensive line was uh, was you know Probably. they they weren't great last year. No, but how much of it is they're on the field constantly? How much of it is? That that not that they're on the field constantly. They're always behind the 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 sticks, so they're constantly in pass block mode. They never get to run block. They never get to get off the line and hit somebody. They're always playing backwards. The quarterback holds the football too long. Yeah, like that's that's really hard on offensive linemen. It's just hard to grade them. Yeah, I mean, Tariq I mean, Cohen that's the is the best defense in all the football from top to bottom, and they were ranked like. 20th last year. Why? Because they were on the field all damn day because yeah, the, the offense is three and out, three and out, three and out. Yeah, no, you're right. When you have a bad quarterback, it makes everything else worse. It just does. No, it, it certainly does. It certainly does. I, that's um, what makes it really hard to, to grade them for me. Everything's I, a black hole. I will say this. Uh, picking up Jalen Johnson, the cornerback out of Utah, where they did, yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought there was a chance that he could have gone first round. Um, I thought so, so yeah, he's, he's got talent. He's, yeah, he's, so I they, like him. He's the best player I like. Well, I mean, I like Cole. I just don't yeah. trust anybody to get in the ball. I mean, he's going to have to be a hell of an athlete if, if Trubisky keeps the job. Yeah. No, you're he right about that. That's a, that. The biggest thing there is, uh, well, Carlos said, yeah, I agree a lot with Chris. The defense is good, good, but bad quarterback play is hurting us big time. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing that needs to change this year. And, and once again, I don't know that, that offensive line is that bad. I don't know how to grade them. I, I guess I agree with you. I, you pass I don't, block, you pass block, you pass block all day long, and and teams just blitz and blitz and blitz you. You can't stop it. At some point in time, you can't block that. Yeah, they the guys were, on the other team are really good. They were they were successful the year before that, based on the fact that Trubisky was kind of new. Nobody really knew. Uh, what exactly he like? It, he was tough to scout because it, it was his first start. It was year. one of those weird yeah. rookie things. He had a decent rookie year, and that's kind of what you you just need somebody to be capable, somebody to be competent. I'm not asking somebody to come in there and be Drew Brees. Okay, yeah. I don't. I mean, I think that's the team that if they could go back in time and not make that trade for Foles, they could have Cam Newton for a sandwich right now. Now they're gonna they're locked into Foles for two years, twenty million dollars, twenty five million dollars. The let's uh, do you want to go ahead and move to uh, the Vikings? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. The Minnesota Vikings had fifteen draft picks in this draft. A little, little strange. The Saints wanted to move up in one round, and they traded the rest of their draft. Yeah. It was. Uh, was it the fifth round or fourth round? I think it was fourth. And it was, and then so the Saints traded. Every pick they had backwards. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, so most of these players will not make the roster. No, 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 no. Uh, the Vikings needed cornerback, wide receiver, and offensive line help. Uh, they got basically <laughs> all of it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it, you know, they, they needed a wide receiver. They went and got Justin Jefferson. Uh, they also got KJ Osborne out of Miami. Yep. They, uh, you know, they, they drafted him another quarterback with Nate Stanley late, late, late. Um, no, that was a late pick. I don't know that that's it. It's just back up. Yeah, and it's and I mean I don't know that he's going to make the roster, but uh, but you know they got Cam Dantzler, uh cornerback out of Mississippi State, who I think is an absolute stud. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought he was a good pickup. I, I do believe um, they got you know, Ezra Cleveland in the second round, and I thought he was a first round quality offensive lineman. The uh, problem was just too many offensive linemen. When this was one of the best offensive line drafts we've had in a long time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They, um, I'll, I'll say this. They got cornerback Jeff Gladney out of TCU. They drafted him in the first round. I, I think that was a little bit of a reach. I mean, maybe they saw more out of him than, I mean, obviously they did, uh, than, than I saw, but I, I, I mean, I watched multiple TCU games this year. Nothing he did stood out to me. 
He got burned a lot. And, yeah, if you're watching ESPN, obviously they're going to show you his highlight reel. You know, you can make a highlight reel for basically anybody. Yeah. But he did not impress me at all at TCU. It, it was amazing to me to see how many guys got drafted out of TCU. Like, I understand that you especially want defensive guys out of Gary Patterson's system, but I just, I didn't understand. Here's what I equate that record to for the last two years, especially. Turnovers, and none of these players have anything to do with that. That's true, but it's, they... No, I mean, because we're not talking about a little bit of turnovers. Oh, I understand, I understand. But the NCAA two years in a row in turnovers... And we're talking about fumbles, interceptions, everything. That's yeah. all from the quarterback. You know, quarterback's not getting drafted. The rest of these guys are good. Yeah. You just can't overturn, overcome turnovers. I, I, I thought they didn't get blown out in a lot of these games, Gary. They were no, in a lot. Of these they games. were, yeah, they were in a lot of the them. Other team I just, got two or three extra possessions. That sucks. Yeah, when you get when you get the extra possessions, yeah. If they beat Texas, if they beat Oklahoma, if they beat some of these games where turnovers are the only reason they lost them. We look at this team completely different. That's true. Uh, they did, have, but now I'm a little biased here because I love Gary Patterson. I, I will tell you, a lot more offensive players got drafted than I thought from TCU. I always would trust drafting a defensive player um, from from a from a team with a coach like Gary Patterson because I know the guy is going to come into the league and I'm not going to have to worry about his intelligence. That's, I'm not going to have to worry about teaching him the game of football. In college, you can be a freak athlete, and you could just out-athlete a lot of guys, especially at skill positions, especially at a position like safety and cornerback. Yeah, um, You can just go out there and be an athlete and not have to think they're going to play a man-to-man on somebody or they're going to play a zone and you see the ball, get the ball, and that's just kind of the, the way you've been coached up. There are a few coaches, Gary Patterson is absolutely one of them, where they come out and you know – they're going to know how to read NFL defenses, uh, offenses. They're going to know how to scheme. They're going to know how to prepare mentally for the game. And so if they physically can play, they've got that much of a leg up, and the learning curve is a lot smaller for them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, for- I think that's why so many defensive players come from TCU in this draft is, you know, we didn't get to see these guys close. They didn't get one-on-one workouts the way they wanted to. And so – I'm just going with a coach that I trust. I, I know this guy can learn our defensive playbook and can learn what we want to do because he's been in a scheme that's complex and complicated already. Yeah, that's a, and, and that's a very valid point, especially for a Mike Zimmer defense. I mean, 100%. Yeah, that's, yeah I mean, because Saban is the same thing. The quality of players is a lot better. Yeah, he's, but, he's undersized. Know, it, um, it, Carlos Gomez well, jumps in on YouTube. He said, glad he's undersized at 5'10". Not sure if they're going to play him in the slider outside. Uh, the other guy on the outside for the Vikings, Mike Hughes, is unproven. So yeah, Hughes, yeah. Hughes is the second guy. Uh, Mike and second guy Hughes is is he's good. He's fine. He's he's he would scare me to be my second only guy. Yeah. Um, I I don't know, man. I just I think there are some coaches that they you know the league just trusts them to be smart players. Yeah, and that's and that's what we got here. And let, let's talk about their fourth round, which. They murdered their fourth round. It was awesome. Uh, yeah. They got DJ Wanham, uh, edge rusher out of South Carolina. They got another edge rusher, James Lynch, out of Baylor, who, honestly, people were talking about him as possibly a, a sleeper first rounder, you know, during the college football season. Now, obviously, These two guys are as athletic out. as anybody else, and oh, they, yeah. they get into a pro system. They're they're going to be just fine. Oh, yeah. And they also got linebacker Troy Dye out of Oregon, and he was a stud for the Ducks last year. So, they, I mean, they killed it in their draft. Now, obviously, you get more bites at the apple, uh, you're going to do all right. You know, we've talked about that before. It's what the Patriots have always done. Um, You get more bites at the apple, you get more opportunities. You know, I mean, they they drafted, let's see, one, two, three edge rushers in this (laughs) draft. They, uh, They got Ezra Cleveland. They got Cam Dantzler. They got uh, cornerback Harrison Hand out of Temple, who, by the way, they got him in the fifth round. Harrison Hand could be better than Jeff Gladney. Don't I'm just saying it's a possibility because I think the kid's got insane talent. Uh, I mean, they they basically cleaned up in this draft. Uh, 
And it's easier when you got 15 picks. I get that. In this, yeah, but they didn't have all those picks until the third day. No, and I understand that. But what I'm saying is they already had a lot of picks anyway. Um, because they, they had two in the first, they had one in the second, one in the third, and then they had three in the fourth, two in the fifth, two in the sixth, and then four in the seventh. So all of that from rounds uh, four on, like, honestly, they had most of the fourth round picks already. Yeah, that's like, right. No, you're right. They everything later got added because of the, the Saints trade. Saints trade, yeah. So, you know, I, I thought they killed it early. Like, they no, really I, got value no, they, picks there. Yeah, but no, I thought they did the same thing. So, if we picked a winner of this conference, this division, there's no question it's the Vikings. Oh, it's the it's Vikings. Not close either. Yeah, it's not even close. I would actually struggle picking a loser here because I don't like what any of the other three. The pro, I'm going to take the Bears out. They probably did the second best out of this four teams. I just can't trust any decision they've made because I can't trust their trigger, man. It's just hard to grade them. No, you're right. You're right. The other that. two, I think the dudes for the uh, for the Lions are going to be better pros and be in the league longer, but I don't know that that means they're winners because it's just hard to quantify who should they have taken other than Swift because they have other needs, and then what would that team look like if they plugged those guys in, in those situations? Yeah, that's I, I I get where you're coming from. I get where so, you're coming from. Who would you say um, the loser is in this division? I mean, I'm probably going to go Packers. Like, I, I just, I, I understand, like, I, I didn't really like what the Bears did. I didn't really like what the Lions did. But I think, I think the Packers are probably the answer also. I, I think the, the Packers. AJ Dillon pick is, is almost unexcusable. Yeah, that's that's bad. The Jordan Love if thing, that, it's, it's hit or miss. But you've got a franchise could, quarterback that has four years left on his deal. And I understand, you know, we can have all the arguments that we want. But if you are really behind your quarterback and you understand that your number one need based on last season is wide receiver and you don't, and, and instead the, I mean, they could have gotten him offensive line help. They could have uh, helped out with the defense. They could have, they could have done any number of things. That's right. And instead they pick the one position that is going to infuriate their most vocal leader. That is just insane to me. Why you would do that? Like all you're doing is causing trouble. You know that's that's what it felt like. So, and we can see what ends up happening with it. My only my only thought is is they have more information than we do on Rodgers. I mean it, that's that's. The I mean they're the thing. only ones that truly know his medical. And if they don't think he's going to last the four year contract, then at some point in time it is responsible. This is why I like going back three years in five years and seeing who really won the draft and who really lost the draft. Cause today we can think these things, but if AJ Dillon becomes the next Adrian Peterson and Jordan love somehow gets the job because Rogers breaks a collarbone or misses a game for a whatever. And he becomes Tom Brady and sorry, you just don't get your job back. Then they look like geniuses and we look like fools. That happens more times than not. So that's it's, it. it's why I like going back. I, I would like once we're done with all of this, if we struggle to find something to talk about, I'd really like to rehash maybe the first or second round of, you know, the draft from three years ago and the draft from five years ago, just to see how what, these what teams these, really do. Yeah. How did they actually do? Uh, let me, let me read you what they said about the Jordan love pick on pro football focus. This is Seth Galena he said, uh, what makes this move even more curious is that Rodgers isn't at the end of his contract in Green Bay. He signed a monster four-year extension in August 2018, restructured it as recently as December 2019. He is under that contract until 2023, though there is a potential out in the deal before that. Critically, that massive overlap also means that Love's value is capped as long as Rodgers is ahead of him on the depth chart. When Rodgers and Favre overlapped, it predated the CBA that made the most powerful thing in football a good quarterback on his rookie deal. Even if Jordan Love becomes a great succession plan to Rodgers down the road, the Packers will have burned most, if not all, of the rookie contract that would have made him such a huge advantage. The yep. other issue is that Jordan Love is a massive gamble, even in a vacuum in the first round. PFF had already written that he simply isn't worth the gamble of a first-round pick and that the volatility, uh, volatility and downside to his game is too great to justify chasing his big playability. For Love, it is perhaps the perfect landing spot because he will get multiple seasons to work on his game with zero threat of having to start and lead a team while he does it. 
For Rodgers and a team that went to a conference championship game mere months ago, it is a total waste of impact in 2020. That's what makes it so insane. So I, I'm going to disagree with a major part of what they said. They said that he was undrafted in the first round because of his volatility, because of his lack of proven, you know, whatever. He's such a risk. Yeah. And, and I just disagree there. Certain teams can do that and certain teams can't. If you have a lot of holes to fill, then you can't be taking risk with your first pick and you can't be taking those gambles. But but if you're the Saints and you think you've got a short-lived quarterback or you're the Colts and you've got a short-lived quarterback, absolutely, man, let her rip. Yeah. And that's Go it. get a boomer bust guy because if he busts, the rest of your team is really good. This is so the to same say that thing nobody that, should have taken him in the first round is wrong. It, this is the same thing that Packers people said about uh, about Patrick Mahomes. It's the same thing. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. You just can't blanket say that. I vehemently disagree with the Lions in the second round taking Delonte, uh, Dante Swift. Right? Dante Swift. Yeah, yeah. But I love. I loved that the Chiefs took one of the big three running backs with their first pick. Why is that? Because those two teams ain't the same. Yeah. yeah. One team had a undrafted running back that had looked good, but there's nothing elite or, you know, dynamic about Williams, even though he probably should have been the Super Bowl MVP. But, you know, that was, that's a great game, and that's awesome. That doesn't mean he's worthy of that position the entire next year. And they went and said, dude, we, we don't have a lot of needs. Let's fill this need with a, you know, with a star. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's how one team can take somebody and another team can take the same somebody. And one I like a lot and the other I hate because they don't all fit. No, you're right about that. This is very much a puzzle. And if pieces don't fit, then it just doesn't work. No, you're you're dead on. You're dead on. All right, anything else that we need to hit on uh, today? That's it, brother. So we went a little long, but that's all right. We had much to discuss. It's a Monday show. That's the way these things uh, handle sometimes. So I'm going to go finish drinking my tequila faux show. And, uh, and of course, if you would so kindly, share the show out. Tell your buddies about it if you appreciate uh, what we're doing. We always appreciate your support. Uh, if you will, make sure to join us again tomorrow. We're going to have a good time. I'll guarantee it. We're going to get into the AFC North, I believe. Is that right, Chris? Yep. AFC North tomorrow. Uh, Till then, everybody be kind and be good to each other. We'll see you then. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show. Leave a nice...